How about it, y'all? You got hog? Appreciate y'all stopping by. Y'all having trouble like I am with the uh, push build with a wizard? It's slow as molasses in wintertime rolling down an ice mountain, I'm telling you right now. So, uh, I'm running a little different variant, and uh, I wanted to share it with y'all. I call it Speedy Wizard Build. Um, you can actually do, like, 125 solo with this, depending on if you're running uh, Comet or Star Pack. It just depends. And um, Comet and Star Pack each have a different um, kind of passive setup because obviously you want to run Star Pack for pushes and you want to run Comet for, you know, speed builds, 90s, bounties, Nephilim rifts, stuff like that. But I wanted to show you all this build. This is what I'm running. It's really fast, um, and it melts things. It's almost like an auto melt. Do a towel set, at least at 90, and um, Neff riffs and stuff. So check it out. Before you do, hit like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment. Maybe join the Pleb Clan or our Discord. Link's in the description. Appreciate y'all. You turned me loose in the nervous hospital, and I was well. All right, let's take a look at our the build. Tau Rashas, okay? Two, four, we're wearing six pieces. Now, this will be a little controversial, right? So this is where you can play with it. You ain't got to do it exactly like I do, but whatever. Uh, Tau's Ami, okay? Guardian set. This is important here. Um, I'm still at the point to where if I remove Guardian set, I suck. I can't do anything. I get one-shotted, etc., etc. This also skyrocketed my damage. So if you're struggling, um, craft you Guardian set. You got to find the plans and then go to the blacksmith and craft it. Um, you want Arcane? unless you get lucky and get a cold because like i said there's two different uh kind of variants of this speed build so there's cold and then there's arcane i don't have a good cold set so i just run the arcane um uh, tails helm right tails orb um you want the area damage and the crit hit chance on this and the meteor damage you you want all of what it's got right here um, I also am running re uh, reduced resource cost on this, and that's just to help not be so expensive when I cast a meteor, even though you really aren't casting a lot of meteors, and you'll see because uh, Tau Set auto cast meteors. So a, lo a lot of people forget about Tau Set and what it gives you, right? Um, you know, it already gives you elemental damage. It already gives you... Um, resistances it already gives you immunity but attacking an enemy or damaging an enemy with every time i make a video this woman behind my shoulder here interrupts me and one day y'all ain't gonna see her and you're gonna wonder what happened and you're gonna know anyway damaging enemies with arcane cold fire or lightning will grant immunity and cause a meteor of the same damage type to fall. Okay? So that's an auto cast. Now that we're using Magic Missile, which, by the way, I think it's hilarious that everyone's kind of giving me, well, not everybody, but some people are giving me shit on my Max Roll video. And if I recall correctly, right, the wizard build on Max Roll at season start said don't use anything other than Storm Armor. And now we're using magic missile. Interesting, huh? Everybody says, you know, can't play around with stuff. Anyway, not going to get on the sidetrack there. Um, but our magic missile, we're going to, every time we teleport, we're going to cast magic missile at the same time or just right directly after that. Magic missile is going to hit and it's going to proc this two piece set right here and throw a meteor down. It's that easy. So if your damage is high enough and you got enough area damage and everything's right, you can basically just teleport around and wipe the map. So uh, for the boots, we're using Nilfers, of course. Um, this is an 886. Let's see what our max is. 900. It's, it's decent. 
Uh, you want meteor damage, obviously, and you want those three intelligence, vitality, resistance. Uh, Tal's pants, okay, the Guardian's pa uh, belt, and here are the stats right here for it. Intelligence, vitality, life armor, it's not too bad. Um, Tal's chest piece. I don't think that attack speed's supposed to be in there. Um, maybe it is, maybe it ain't. I'm not sure. I don't see it on my max roll here. And, uh, okay, pauldrons. So, sometimes you don't die, and the enemies run away. And this has, uh, I really need to roll this some more, try to get 20% area damage. But uh, this is a pretty decent piece. And uh, Halo of Karini. So if you uh, shock somebody with storm armor, you take 80% less damage. Uh, that is the max on that. And then your weapon's going to be Aether Walker. Okay, it's pretty easy to find. Main reason you're using this is teleport no longer has a cooldown, but costs 25 arcane power. No problem. My opinion, I think it's bullshit that you have a cooldown on teleport. I think that's the absolute, if you were to ask me the number one and number two worst things that they did in Diablo 3, it would be that you took away trade and ability and you took away um, basically infinite teleport with a um, wizard. It doesn't make any sense to me why a demon hunter can go around at a thousand miles an hour at mock Jesus, at one of, as one of my clan mates says, and blast around the map with no problem. But the wizard has to use a damn cooldown. And I don't care how much cooldown you stack. I don't care what Talrasha's little Mickey Mouse. You know, th this right here. Attacking with Meteor reduces cooldown and teleport by one second. That, that ain't as good as we all think it is. Like, it still sucks. When you're in a GR and you're lagging way behind everybody because they're Z-Barbs, ZDH, and all, you know, uh, Impale... And they're gone like the wind, just... And you're back here like... <laughs> do, 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 wait, wait for me, guys. Ah! And you get one-shotted because you run out of shield, you run out of uh, density, you run out of everything, and everyone's like, <sighs> Hog's dead again. Let me go back here and hold his hand and babysit him. Right? So solve that problem and run the damn Aether Walker. And then you don't have to worry about cooldown. This is the greatest thing since sliced bread to me. And so you pair it with, you got to keep rolling it until you get um, your magic missile proc on there, your, your sanctimonious power. Magic missile fires 10 missiles and gains the effect of the seeker rune. And what this does is um, it just just makes you like crazy. We, we all seen it. We all talked about it. But uh, if you pair this with the proper skills, it's going to refill your mana really fast. I call it mana. It's arcane power, whatever. I'm a D2 player. But if you do that, if you're teleporting around everywhere, let's back out of this. This is my theory behind it. If you're teleporting around everywhere, your mana's going to drop. So your arcane power is coming down, right? But when you're in a rift or you're out in the monster world, when you do that, you're just going to start gaining arcane power back, especially when it hits everything. And when it's got that seeker rune on there, you could have one monster and all 10 of them uh, shards or whatever you want to call them, missiles, are going to go hit that guy and you're going to get all that arcane power back, right? So it's definitely an improvement over the staff and all of that. Well, Hog, you need the staff because the staff gives your meteor boost damage and la, 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 la. Right. Put it in the cube. Because to be honest with you, when you're doing speeds and you're not doing pushes, right? This is the one you need. Reduces the arcane power cost of meteor by 50% and increases damage 400%, right? I don't honestly care about this at all. I know it's going to give you 500% um, at 10 stacks to one target, right? But doing speed builds where I know I'm wiping the floor or, you know, I can just keep keep casting my own meteor. You know, I'm not really worried about it, especially with a Comet build running Arcane Dynamo. We'll talk about that here in a second. 
I'm not worried about it either because I'm going to have more damage coming out of that than this right here. Plus, I'm always running with uh, usually some supports and, and an extra person that does damage. So you're not going to sit here and convince me on a speed run that I need to use this, right? It's just not going to happen. You know, I'm also running the uh, the Mefo. So, again, that's just damage, 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 damage. And then, um, you know, honestly, you don't have to run the ring. I just don't have anything. I don't need this, right? Because I don't have anything on cooldown. So... I guess we could run broken promises i guess what i'm saying is you can run whatever you want i just don't have a lot extracted in here uh, i guess you could run broken promises if you wanted to i don't know anyway that's your ticket the aether walker right there make sure you uh socket it don't roll socket right get you a romulani's cube all right, let me show you what it does. Uh, oh, Lord, I ain't even told y'all about the daggum skill. All right, so it's just like your typical wizard setup that everyone's running right now. Uh, magic weapon conduit. And so this is what's going to give you back arcane power. So enemies hit by your attacks restore up to three arcane power. You're going to go meteor comet. Now, this is a cold build here. Okay. You don't want to do this on pushing. You want to do this on speed. And the cold just, it's faster to cast. It doesn't take all your arcane power. Uh, storm armor, power to storm. So reduce the arcane power of all active skills by three. Uh, teleport calamity. Okay, you have to use this one because this gives you arcane. If you figure out that you're missing your uh, forest stack for Tal Rasha, this is why, because you need calamity on here. Um, you have to teleport as your fourth, like, proc, okay? It'll give you the arcane damage. Um, magic Missile, Conflagrate. Um, this gives you fire, right? This is your fire to be part of your four elementals. Because remember, you need those four, cold, fire, lightning, arcane, to make your set powerful. Uh, familiar is fire. And really, the, honestly, the reason that we're wearing this, because um, I really don't care about Familiar, but uh, it's to give us the 10% increased damage while Familiar is active. Passive skills, okay. Change these how you want, really. Um, what I found that's the fastest is running Power Hungry and Audacity, okay. Reason for it is you're going to be moving all the time, and you want this 30% all the time. So 30% uh, damage to enemies farther than 30 yards, 30% damage within 15 yards. Because there's sometimes you're going to teleport right in the middle of them and meteors are going to hit and they're going to be right next to you. So you still want that extra damage. You're going to have no problem doing damage, but you want to make sure that you're wiping everything. Uh, your Gavanizing War just gives you a really nice shield. And then uh, your Prodigy, okay? I'm running Prodigy on speed. I need maximum arcane power at all times. That's just the way that I run it. Just give it a try. If you don't like it, you can swap it out for um, Arcane Dynamo or, you know, even though you're not going to need that. Um, Astro Presence, Blur, whatever you want, okay? This is just, I run Prodigy because I want Arcane Power. Also, there's not always enemies around. And so every time you're still casting, you know, Magic Missile, you're gaining that Arcane Power back. All right, let's show you some gameplay. Pretty simple. You get all your stacks. And you can literally Just teleport around. And um, I always precast 
So your uh, Enchantress is um, wearing Nemesis, which just look on Max Roll for this. I really don't care about her too much. I just keep her for Flavor of Time and Nemesis, right? Um, she's wearing Nemesis if you're doing this solo, so I just precast on a, on a pylon and then click it, and by the time that they spawn, they're dead, right? Oh, I don't want to lose my death breath up there. And I'm not great at teleporting. I don't, for some reason, I'm just not very good. I guess I'm getting older. But, um, you'll get faster. You know, if your eye hand coordination is a little better. But see, I just, I teleported in. Magic missile hit. They got hit with a, a meteor, and they're dead. Didn't even have to worry about them. Really, all I'm doing is looking up here at the mini map. And coming back to pick up Death Breath. And so I'm really just teleporting based on the mini map. Come to an elite pack, then you can cast one or two meteor. Pick up Death Breath. And just keep moving. That's the main thing, is to get in the habit of uh, casting Magic Missile directly after you teleport. And even better, if you have a gaming mouse or a gaming keyboard, sets you up a macro. You know, and that'll really help you out too. You can just click to put one button and it'll do what you need it to do. But this will tremendously speed up Nephilim rifts and, and all that stuff for you. But I feel like that's one of the things that we're complaining about a lot with the wizard is the lack of speed. And, uh, you know, we did a race with a demon hunter. I kept right up with a demon hunter, neck and neck. It all depends on the map you get, um, you know, how good your clear speeds and stuff are. Usually my 90s are about two minutes on the money, which is pretty good. And of course, there's some builds that are a little bit faster, but you know, for a wizard, for guys that really enjoy playing wizard, now that we've got a, a good build and everything this season, um, it's just nice. Whoa, I don't know. Nice to be able to teleport, just, and that's how it should be, in my opinion. It should, uh, Wizard should be able to teleport, and it should cost uh, arcane power. That's how it's always been. That's how it should continue to be. And putting it on a cooldown, which I've always bitched about it for 10 years. See, it just auto cast. I mean, as long as you haven't hit them, you can only hit them one time. So if they're a uh, elite pack or something like that, you might have to hit them. You actually have to get, Lord have mercy. You actually have to get your, uh, your actual meteors out to hit them, right? I swear to God, those are some more firebird. Now in your rift guardian spawns, just have them waiting, right? And for our uh, star pack build, this is kind of for the semi pushing, you know, 125s, 120s. Uh, gear is still the same, right? Uh, the only difference I wanted to point out is on the Aether Walker, that reduce all resource, that should be area damage. This is an area damage build. You want area damage. Now, you notice my, my sheet damage is a little higher with this setup. Can't tell you why. All the gear is the same. Everything's the same. Um, skills. Minor changes, okay? You're running Star Pack. Um, Star Pack 
one thing about it, it sucks all of your arcane power out when you cast, but that's okay. It does massive amounts of damage. We'll talk about that here in a second. You're still running magic weapon conduit. You're going to run wormhole teleport. Okay, so a couple options here. Teleport, you can change. You can either run wormhole, uh, which gives you an extra charge, okay, or you can run safe passage which um, I'm actually going to change that right now because I have a nasty habit of teleporting directly into a mob and just getting wiped every time. So I'm going to change that. Uh, storm armor, power to storm. That's kind of just universal. It's always that for me. Um, you're familiar. Again, spark flint. This is to give you the 10% increase damage. And then with the magic missile, we're going glacial spike. So you got to have the cold because you're changing your meteor to arcane. You're getting cold here, getting fire from your familiar, you're getting arcane from your um, teleport, you're getting storm armor or lightning from your storm armor, you're also getting arcane from your uh, conduit, and arcane from your uh, magic me or your meteor. So you ain't got no problem. She's trying to get me to say something again. All right, so for the passives again. This is whatever you really like, but I'm going to give you some reasons why I run this stuff. Um, dominance, this is really one you can play with. Um, I've been playing with this between uh, Dominance and like either Audacity or Power Hungry, something like that. Um, to me, Elemental Exposure, useless. If you do the math on this, it's only 20% damage, right? So there's better choices for me. This is better choice. This is a better choice because it's 30% additional damage. So to me, it's a no-brainer, right? Um, you know, even... Uh, I'm, I'm not even going to say glass can. It'll be better. What You get what I'm trying to say. This is dumb. This would be better depending on your play style. This would be better depending on your play style. Okay. Um, Arcane Dynamo. So I'm running the Dynamo. All you got to do is cast Magic Missile five times. And so the way that I'm running the play style, as soon as I cast the Meteor, I'm hitting that Magic Missile five times. Because there's going to be a delay, right, between the uh, Meteors coming down from Star Pack and from when you actually cast so you've got some time to throw a magic missile and if you can get at least three or four in there you've got enough arcane power to cast another um meteor right back behind them so that's the reason i'm using arcane dynamo it doesn't reset every time you cast a meteor so it won't use until you get to the five flashes so it's really nice is when you hit arcane cycle on your conviction elements you hit five flashes of insight, so your arcane dynamo stacked, 60% additional damage. And then you get an oculus ring that spawns. If you hit all three of those at the same time, then it's crazy amount of damage. I mean, you're talking about two to 300% increased damage, right? All right, astral presence, uh, presence. Now, I had a discussion with this last night with another guy in the clan. Increase your maximum arcane power by 20 and arcane regen by 2.5. Now, I know a lot of y'all are saying, you shouldn't have that on there. That, that doesn't go on there. Maxwell said, don't put that on there. Okay, just hear me out for a second now. So, we're running Star Pact, where everything is dependent on the amount of mana that you have, correct? So, each point of extra arcane power spent increases the impact damage of Meteor by 20% weapon damage as arcane. Okay, so let's do this quick math, right? So, if you don't have Astral Presence... My uh, my mana, arcane power, will be 152. It costs 40 arcane power to cast. That leaves me with 112 mana pool to d that it's going to take damage off of, right? It's going to say, okay, it's 112. Multiply that by uh, 20%. So it's going to give me 22.4. Okay, so you get what I'm saying? 22,000% weapon damage. Cool. If I wear Astral Presence, then it's going to give me 172 Arcane Power. It's going to cost me 40 to cast, right? 
going to leave me with 132 mana that it can calculate damage off of times 20. And, and the math, don't, you know, don't focus on me. Don't kill me about the math. You just get understand. We're trying to understand what this means, right? 132 times 20. 26.4 thousand. So you see that's 400% increase in damage or 400 hit points or whatever, okay? You understand what I'm trying to tell you. Use this. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, if you're running comment stuff, you don't have to use it. But if this right here is extremely based on the amount of extra arcane power spent, that's what increases your impact damage of Meteor. And each point gets 20%. You want as much damn mana as you possibly can have, as much arcane power as possible, right? All right, so that goes back to Galvanizing Ward. This will keep you alive right here. So you really can change dominance for, um, say, power hungry, depending on your play style, okay? Now, let's do some, let's do some, uh, let's just do a 110 just to show y'all. And for our uh, star pack build, this is kind of for the, Semi pushing, you know, 125s, 120s. Uh, gear is still the same, right? Uh, the only difference I wanted to point out is on the Aether Walker, that reduce all resource, that should be area damage. This is an area damage build. You want area damage. Now, you notice my, my sheet damage is a little higher with this setup. Can't tell you why. All the gear is the same, everything's the same. Um, skills, minor changes. Okay, you're running Star Pack. Um, Star Pack. One thing about it, it sucks all of your arcane power out when you cast, but that's okay. It does massive amounts of damage. We'll talk about that here in a second. You're still running Magic Weapon Conduit. You're gonna run Wormhole Teleport. Okay, so a couple options here. Teleport you can change. You can either run Wormhole, uh, which gives you an extra charge okay or you can run safe passage which um, i'm actually going to change that right now because i have a nasty habit of teleporting directly into a mob and just getting wiped every time so i'm going to change that uh storm armor power to storm that's kind of just universal it's always that for me um you're familiar again spark flint this is to give you the 10 percent increased damage and then with the magic missile we're going glacial spike so you got to have the cold because you're changing your meteor to arcane. So you're getting cold here, getting fire from your familiar, you're getting arcane from your um, teleport, you're getting storm armor, or lightning from your storm armor, you're also getting arcane from your uh, conduit, and arcane from your uh, magic, or your meteor. So you ain't got no problem. She's trying to get me to say something again. All right, so for the passives, again, this is whatever you really like, but I'm going to give you some reasons why I run this stuff. Um, dominance, this is really one you can play with. Um, I've been playing with this between uh, Dominance and like either Audacity or Power Hungry, something like that. Um, to me, Elemental Exposure, useless. If you do the math on this, it's only 20% damage, right? So there's better choices for me. This is better choice. This is a better choice because it's 30% additional damage. So to me, it's a no-brainer, right? Um, you know, even... Uh, I'm not even going to say glass can. It'll be better. But you get what I'm trying to say. This is dumb. This would be better depending on your play style. This would be better depending on your play style, okay? Um, Arcane Dynamo. So I'm running the Dynamo. All you got to do is cast Magic Missile five times. And so the way that I'm running the play style, as soon as I cast the Meteor, I'm hitting that Magic Missile five times because there's going to be a delay, right? 
between the uh, meteors coming down from Star Pack and from when you actually cast. So you've got some time to throw a magic missile. And if you can get at least three or four in there, you've got enough arcane power to cast another um, meteor right back behind them. So that's the reason I'm using Arcane Dynamo. It doesn't reset every time you cast a meteor, so it won't use until you get to the five flashes. So what's really nice is when you hit Arcane Cycle on your Conviction Elements, you hit five flashes of Insight, so your Arcane Dynamo is stacked, 60% additional damage. Then you get an oculus ring that spawns if you hit all three of those at the same time then it's crazy amount of damage i mean you're talking about two to three hundred percent increased damage right all right astral presence uh presence now i had a discussion with this last night with another guy in the clan increase your maximum arcane power by 20 and arcane regen by 2.5 now i know a lot of y'all are saying you shouldn't have that on there that that doesn't go on there maxwell said don't put that on there Okay, just hear me out for a second now. So we're running Star Pact, where everything is dependent on the amount of mana that you have, correct? So each point of extra arcane power spent increases the impact damage of Meteor by 20% weapon damage as arcane. Okay, so let's do this quick math, right? So if you don't have Astral Presence, my, uh, my mana, arcane power, will be 152. It costs 40 arcane power to cast. That leaves me with 112 mana pool to d that it's gonna take damage off of, right? It's gonna say, okay, it's 112. Multiply that by uh, 20%. So it's gonna give me 22.4, okay? So you get what I'm saying? 22,000% weapon damage. Cool. If I wear Astral Presence, then it's going to give me 172 Arcane Power. It's going to cost me 40 to cast, right? It's going to leave me with 132 mana that it can calculate damage off of times 20. And, and the math, you know, don't focus on me. Don't kill me about the math. You just get understand. We're trying to understand what this means, right? 132 times 20. 26.4 thousand. So you see that's 400% increase in damage or 400 hit points or whatever, okay? You understand what I'm trying to tell you. Use this. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, if you're running comment and stuff, you don't have to use it. But if this right here is extremely based on the amount of extra arcane power spent, that's what increases your impact damage of Meteor. And each point gets 20%. You want as much damn mana as you possibly can have, as much arcane power as possible, right? All right, so that goes back to Galvanizing Ward. This will keep you alive right here. So you really can change dominance for, um, say, power hungry, depending on your play style, okay? Just do a 110 just to show y'all. Yeah, you want to make sure that you've got a pretty full mana pool when you go to cast because that's going to make your damage be as high as possible. And always cast your magic missiles. That's going to refill everything. Let you cast it back up. Just want to try to group them the best you can.
Yeah, y'all get it. It's still pretty fast. You still see I got a lot of work to do on my teleporting, and I just, whatever. You know, it's just, it is what it is. But it's pretty fast for a wizard. It's fastest that I found you can go. I'm sure there's minor tweaks you can do. Um, appreciate y'all hanging out with me. Hopefully this helps you. Leave a comment if it does. Leave a like if it does. Subscribe if you like the content. Try to bring y'all all kind of different stuff, not just here's this build, this is what you do. We try to bring some cool content, me reacting to stuff, because I'm something special, I'll tell you. But uh, thank y'all very much. Hit subscribe. We'll see y'all next time.